Alright, so earlier I did a video on uh, RT Overdrive in Cyberpunk 2077 using the RTX 4070 Ti and uh, due to time constraints I was not able to compare it to native uh, rendering nor with uh, out frame generation. So this will be part 2 where we'll just be testing whether you can actually run RT Overdrive mode in Cyberpunk 2077 without frame generation right so i've got a 4070 ti here and uh, generally speaking it's more or less the same as an rtx 3090 when it comes to the lower resolutions 1080p and 1440p at 4k the 3090 3090 ti pulls a little bit ahead due to the bus bandwidth and the memory bandwidth etc etc but uh, this will be a pretty decent uh, test anyway as uh, the minimum requirements for rt overdrive according to cd project red is an RTX 3090 right so I've just got it here at uh, 1080p this is on the ultra preset without ray tracing without uh, frame generation no DLSS right so we are getting around 130 140 frames per second at 1080p right so let's uh, let's just go and enable ray tracing so all I'm going to be doing is just uh, ray tracing here and we'll set it to ultra right so lighting is just on ultra everything regarding ray tracing is uh, on and uh, you'll see that our frame rate uh, pretty much uh, halves right so we're still getting around 60 frames per second uh, in this area it's about 70 and uh, in here it's uh, it's about 60 i wasn't able to maintain 60 at all times during my previous run uh, just for testing and uh, yeah you can see that it does dip below 60 frames per second even without the rt overdrive setting right so let's just uh, see what happens once we enable overdrive remember this is at uh, 1080p no dlss no frame generation Right, so you'll see that once you enable this uh, path tracing, uh, all these settings actually become unavailable, right? Because now all those uh, features are handled by path tracing, right? And uh, you can see that the light and the reflections uh, seem to be a bit, well, they're definitely a lot brighter. I'm not entirely sure whether it looks better. That's uh, uh, not for me to determine, but uh, now you can see we are getting around 30 frames per second. Right, so I'm just going to do my normal benchmark right now. I'm going to run to the end of this uh, street here, this uh, red light district, and uh, run all the way back. We'll uh, have a look at the numbers and then we'll see what we can do to improve it. Uh, you can just have a look at the frame time graph there. It's uh, it's not very smooth. Uh, the 1% and the 0.1% lows are, are pretty low, especially the 0.1% lows, which would indicate that there's quite a lot of stuttering. All right, that was it. We managed to maintain 30 frames per second, actually. Uh, so let's see if we can actually get that up to 60. So I'm just going to enable uh, DLSS uh, quality, so super resolution quality. We're not going to touch the frame generation. And, uh, well, it seems like it uh, basically jumped to around 60 frames per second. Yeah, it looks kind of blurry uh, unfortunately that's what happens at 1080p once you start enabling dlss uh, super resolution uh, i'm also playing on a 32 inch screen so uh, 1080p does look uh, a bit blurry to to me anyway but uh, this just looks mm, a little bit worse all right so for our little run here we maintained 53 frames per second so not yet in that 60. all right let's see if we uh, drop this down to balanced I think we should be able to. Uh, the game feels uh, quite a bit uh, smoother. All right, let's just reset our numbers here and uh, go for a run. And uh, unfortunately, we're still not able to maintain 60 frames per second. This uh, specific area here seems to be quite uh, difficult to render. It drops into the lower 50s in that uh, specific spot. And uh, that also brings our 0.1% low number down quite considerably. Right, but it was close enough to a 60 frames per second experience. I wouldn't really go down uh, below actually quality when it comes to DLSS on 1080p. But uh, let's see what we need to do to get 60 frames per second at all times. Let's drop it down to performance. And now we are rendering internally at a lot lower resolution. I don't remember all the numbers uh, off the top of my head. But let's see if we can maintain that 60 frames per second. Uh, over here is the real test and uh, 59. 
I mean that's uh, close enough I think I'll just uh, call it a 60 but uh, as you can see that even with a 3090 Ti or equivalent uh, at 1080p with the LSS performance it's difficult to hit 60 frames per second. I also did a test earlier just by switching everything to low and then enabling RT overdrive and the performance difference was like three or four frames per second so I'm just uh, using the preset it's just uh, for consistency sake. All right uh, that was at 1080p now let's see what happens at 1440p. Right, we're now at 1440p native, no DLSS and uh, RT overdrive is enabled and uh, it's just a blurry mess. <laughs> you can see there that the PC latency is around 100 milliseconds. Uh, once again, I'm not sure if that uh, in the top right hand corner is actually showing on your screen or not or in the recording, uh, but uh, we are getting around 20 frames per second, right? I think it will drop below 20, it's going down to around 15 frames per second. Um, I mean, this is definitely playable, um, no sarcasm whatsoever. And the good news is that uh, in this uh, specific area, we are only dropping down two frames per second instead of 15. So that's uh, definitely a win in my book. All right, uh, that was it. Uh, I didn't actually capture the benchmark numbers because it's just pointless, 20 frames per second at our highest. Uh, uh, definitely nothing to write home about. All right, let's see uh, what we can do with our the LSS settings here. Um, once again I'm going to start off with quality and uh, this time I'll capture the benchmark numbers uh, or the performance metrics. So we doubled our frame rate pretty much right so in, that, uh, in this uh, specific spot anyway it's uh, dropping down into the 30s here uh, we might drop below 30 and uh, there we go but uh, this is not terrible because we are not using frame generation the input latency at 30 frames per second is definitely not unusable but uh, definitely not a perfectly playable experience not in my opinion anyway all right uh, let's see what happens at a dlss balanced all right so we're at dlss balanced uh, let's just reset our numbers here well we doubled our frame rate going from native to quality but uh, we gained very few frames per second by going to balanced um, we are we are pretty much uh, CPU limited. You can see that the GPU usage is not always sitting at 100%. Uh, it does drop down into the lower 90s uh, every now and again. So we might not uh, gain too many frames uh, just by lowering the DLSS quality. But uh, I mean, we have to try. All right, uh, let's see what happens at our performance. I mean, we did gain uh, quite a bit there. Um, we almost got 60 frames per second there for uh, a few seconds but uh, down here it's uh, dropping down into the mid 40s again right so it would seem that at 1440p uh, we might not be able to hit a solid 60 frames per second i think uh, not even ultra performance would get us there but uh, we have to try all right, let's re reset our numbers. You can just immediately see the shimmering. Um, this is definitely not worth it. If you if you want to play at 1440p, uh, just play at a lower frame rate. Uh, don't use uh, FSR Ultra Performance or DLSS Ultra Performance. And then this just looks terrible. Now, I have to say that I am running this on the base DLL file for DLSS, uh, the one that ships with the game. I haven't replaced the DLL file. Apparently it fixes quite a lot of the shimmering, but uh, the point of these videos uh, for now is just to get uh, base numbers using everything stuck, right? My CPU is not overclocked, my memory is only running XMP, and uh, the GPU is running stock as well. Uh, we actually managed to maintain uh, 70 frames per second at all times here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the game looks terrible. And the whole point of uh, ray traced overdrive mode is to make the game look a lot prettier, right? And then you just go and spoil that by enabling uh, ultra performance DLSS. So definitely not worth it at 1440p. All right, so now for the real test, let's see what happens at 4K. All right, this uh, went about as well as I expected. Um, <laughs> Actually, I expected a, a little bit more. Uh, just look at the the car there. The motion blur is just uh, making that car ghost quite a lot. Uh, four frames per second with the render latency sitting at 820 milliseconds. Um, that means that there's literally almost one second before uh, 
a gunshot actually registers after I click it on the mouse. Alright, so 5 frames per second is just not going to cut it. I don't even think I'll make it to the end of the street here. Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's just go down into uh, FSR performance. Sorry, I keep on calling it FSR, it's DLSS. So let's uh, go with the DLSS quality. I mean, let's just uh, follow the same uh, train as we did earlier. Uh, just, uh, I don't have uh, DLAA enabled, um, but uh, we'll test that uh, in a later video. All right, uh, let's go with the DLSS quality. Yeah. Right, and we got uh, almost uh, three times our performance here. Yeah. Now we are getting more or less the same frame rate as what we had at uh, 1440p native. Uh, definitely still not playable. So uh, let's not go there. Uh, let's keep on changing the DLSS settings here. Let's go to balanced. See if we can get uh, at least above 30, uh, 25 frames per second. I mean, we are at uh, five times the performance we started off with so that's definitely a win and at 4k DLSS is uh, balanced and even performance uh, still look pretty okay but uh, we're not getting even 30 frames per second right so this is a, a pure playstation 4 <laughs> experience at launch uh, without the lighting all right uh, let's uh, go down to performance all I'm looking for is uh, 30 frames per second, all right? Uh, there we go, got 30 frames per second, and uh, we definitely won't maintain that. But uh, we have to at least complete one run, uh, and then we'll drop down to uh, ultra performance, and uh, then we'll just call it a day, because obviously we won't be able to run this with uh, RT Overdrive at 4K with this GPU. All right, there we have it, uh, 25 frames per second, at least our... Uh, percentile lows are spaced more proportionately closer to each other so that's a good thing all right uh, let's see fsr uh, dlss ultra performance um i honestly don't think it'll give us a constant uh, 30 frames per second based on our previous runs but uh, once again just look at the shimmering there not sure if uh, it'll be captured in the youtube video but just look, look at the balloons there and uh, that tree in the background as soon as i zoom in it uh, the shimmering disappears but uh, it just looks terrible we actually gained quite a lot we're at uh, 50 frames per second uh, let's see if we can uh, maintain above 40 at least the moment of truth and dropping down into 38 yeah. so this is actually not not a terrible experience uh, as i said at 4k uh, even the LSS on lower quality settings uh, look okay. Uh, it's because it's obviously got uh, still a higher internal render resolution, but definitely a setting that I'd avoid. I mean, rather just not enable RT Overdrive and uh, play with a normal RT Ultra. But remember, this is just a tech demo, guys. Uh, this is definitely not. Uh, what the next game that comes out will look like uh, this was just nvidia and cdpr coming together and uh, building something to show us what the hardware and uh, their engine is capable of all right i'm not saying that this won't be the future but it won't be like every single game within the next year all right so it's nothing to to worry about if you don't have an rtx uh, 40 series gpu or a gpu that supports frame generation uh once FSR 3 actually comes out like it's definitely not the end of the world this is just a, a showcase uh, this is what the hardware can do this is what it can look like and it looks pretty good well, obviously not these settings but um, so it goes I'm not even going to be playing with the uh, RT overdrive enabled I'm going back to my RT ultra preset with frame generation enabled and play at 120 frames per second that's a much more enjoyable experience for me all right, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.